Modelling with first order differential equations. So here we'll be looking at everything we've done so far on differential equations and using them in some real world examples. So let's look at a question. So if we have 60 rhinos are introduced to a national park for conservation of the species to rebuild and the park estimates that it has capacity for 240 rhinos. So we have capacity for 240 rhinos. And we've got the growth rate of a population uh, described with this differential equation. That dp dt, so this is the rate that the population grows, is equal to some constant r times the population, all outside of 1 minus the population over its capacity of 240. We have this differential equation. So some things we also know, so we know initially the population is 60 rhinos. So we know when t equals zero, the population is equal to 60. And we're also given that one over x outside of one minus x over a equals one over x minus 1 over x minus a, which might come in handy. So let's go ahead and so we're up, so the first thing we're after is we're after a function of the population in terms of time. This is what we're after. So what we need to do, we can't just bring the dt over because we have p's here. So we need to bring the p's with the p's. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over p outside of 1 minus p over 240. Same thing on this side, 1 over p outside of 1 minus p over 240. So if we do that, all of this and this will cancel out. So we have 1 over p outside of 1 minus p over 240 dp. So we're going to also multiply both sides by dt. So then we get r dt over on this side. Now, we were given this fraction equaling these two fractions, which looks something like this. So we can see where p is equal to x here, p is equal to x, and a is equal to 240. So we'll be able to rewrite this fraction as 1 over p minus 1 over p minus 240 dp, and this equals r dt. Now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. And the integral of 1 over p is just going to be the ln of the absolute value of p. And the integral of this second fraction, so because we have the subtraction of two terms, we can just integrate them separately. And this is going to be minus, well, in this fraction, the derivative of the denominator is in the numerator, so we can just write this as the ln of the denominator. So it would be the ln of p minus 240 all absolute valued. And the integral of r with respect to time, well, r is just a constant, so this will just be rt plus our constant. We can tidy this up a little bit because we have the subtraction of logs here, which we know is going to be the log of a quotient. So we'll have the ln of the absolute value of p over p minus 240 equals rt plus a constant and we had initial condition that when t is equal to 0 p is equal to 60 so let's sub that in so we can find c so we have the ln of 60 over 60 minus 240 equals r times 0 
plus C, that's all just zero. So we get C equals the ln of the absolute value of 60 over minus 180, which is just gonna be ln of, now the 60 over 180 is just one third, and the absolute value of minus a third is just gonna be a third. So that's what we get for our constant term. So then we can sub that back in to our equation over here. So we're going to get the ln of the absolute value of p over p minus 240 equals rt plus ln of a third. And now we need to go ahead and make p the subject. So let's go ahead and take both sides and raise them with a base of e, make them the powers. So we're going to get e to the ln of the absolute value of p minus 240 equals e to the power of rt plus ln of a third. This is going to give us just the absolute value of p over p minus 240 equals e to the power of rt plus ln of a third. We could, let's take the absolute value is defined with its plus or minus, so we'll take the plus or minus of p over p minus 240. And we can rewrite this right hand side as e to the power of rt multiplied by e to the power of ln of a third. Let's take the plus or minus to the other side. So we're gonna get p over p minus 240 equaling plus or minus. Now e to the power of ln a third just equals a third. And we get e to the rt. Now let's multiply both sides by our denominator. Before we do that, we need to distinguish if we should be taking the plus or minus. And we can actually do that by subbing in our initial conditions. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's sub in P is 60 again, just to double check if we need the plus or minus value. So, So we're going to sub in 60, and we get 60 minus 240. And when we sub it in, we actually get a negative value, we get negative a third. So this confirms for us that we need to be using the negative value. So let's just confirm that. So we have p over p minus 240 equaling minus a third e to the rt. So we know we need that, that negative value now. Going to need some more room. So we had P over P minus 240 equaling minus a third E to the RT. So that's times both sides by a denominator. That's going to give us P equals minus a third e to the rt outside of p minus 240. Let's expand this out. So we're going to get p equals minus a third e to the rt times p minus, now, sorry, minus times a minus is going to give us a plus, and a third times 240 is going to give us 80. So we get 80 e to the rt. Let's take this term with p in it to the other side. So we're gonna get p plus a third e to the rt p equaling 80 e to the rt. Factorize out our p. So we're gonna get p outside of one plus a third e to the rt equaling 80 e to the rt. Divide both sides by our bracket there. So we're gonna get p equals 
80 e to the RT over 1 plus the third e to the RT. And that's our final answer for the solution to the differential equation of P in terms of T. We have a second question that's asking us to find R, given that after two years, there are, the population is of 70 rhinos. So we can just go ahead and sub that in. So we know the population is going to be 70. It's going to equal 80e to the 2r, because we know t is equal to 2, over 1 plus a third e to the 2r. So that's times both sides by our denominator. So we're going to get 70 outside of 1 plus a third e to the 2r equals 80e to the 2r. We can expand it out, so we get 70 plus 70 over 3, e to the 2r equals 80 e to the 2r. Let's bring our e to the 2r's to one side, so we'll get 70 equals 80 e to the 2r minus 70 over 3, e to the 2r. We'll factorize out our e to the 2r. So we get e to the 2r outside of 80 minus 70 over 3. Divide both sides by that number. So we get e to the 2r equals 70 over... 80 minus 70 over 3 is just 170 over 3. And... 70 over 170 over 3 equals 21 over 17. Now we just take the natural log of both sides. So we get ln of e to the 2r equaling ln of 21 over 17. Bring the 2r down to the front using our log laws and multiplied by natural log of e gives us 1. So we have 2r equals the ln of 21 over 17 and Divide both sides by 2, or times both sides by a half, and we get r equals a half ln of 21 over 17 as our final answer for r.